morning to you all and welcome to a new day, a new race, and a new start to the Lotus 49 Grand Prix Legend season. Here we are again, starting the first of 12 weeks of competition. Racers find themselves behind the familiar wheel of the classic 1967 Lotus 49 machine. Today's challenge, Watkins Glen. With a clean point slate and the first checkered flag of the season up for grabs, who will claim the top step of the podium today? Welcome to the first race of the Lotus 49 Grand Prix Legend Series, and you're going to see all the action live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hello everybody, and I'm Joey Atterbury, and alongside me in the booth today is Ozzy Puaka. Behind the scenes is our director, Robert O'Brien, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. To kick off this new season, let's get a better grip of what these drivers are going to tackle today at Watkins Glen with our GSRC track guide. Welcome to Watkins Glen International. Situated in upstate New York, just south of the Finger Lakes, this track has seen it all. Few road circuits can boast hosting Formula One, IndyCar, NASCAR, and IMSA during its history. Though it did have a brief fallow period in the early 80s, thanks to the investment of local companies, it's grown into one of the premier road tracks in the U.S. With four layouts to choose from that range between two and a half and three and a half miles in length, lap times can vary greatly but it also means it's suitable for lots of different levels of racing, from amateur to pro. The one thing that stays consistent no matter which car and which layout you're using is that Watkins Glen means speed. Many of the straights are very long and the majority of the corners are fast sweepers. Some of them include a surprising amount of banking as well. Combine that with the proximity of the barriers and this historic circuit retains a very old school feel. Drivers in lesser powered cars can expect drafting battles, while higher powered machinery will test the skill and bravery of their pilots. Some of the turns are visually iconic, such as the carousel and the S's. Others, like the inner loop, the chute, and turn nine, greatly challenge even the expertly skilled. And of course, we haven't even mentioned the drastic amount of elevation change drivers experience. Between its rich history and popularity among drivers, this track stays busy and seems likely to be that way for a long, long time. Watkins Glen is definitely a North American classic. And Ozzy, why don't you give us a preview of kind of the action that we're going to see today here? Well... The old school ones, uh, the OG sim racers, are going to know what this is all about, Joey. Watkins Glen and Lotus 49, that is a combo pretty much um, engraved in the history of sim racing. But for the new ones, for the new folks and all our viewers, it's going to be a high speed race. You can see the track layout there, not too many tight corners, the first corner being the tightest. And then you head up the hill through the SS and onto the long straight with the loop and 10 back. It is kind of close to what they raced in 1967. It's not quite the same layout, mind you, but it is close enough. So you can get the same idea. And it's going to be a drafting race, more or less. We have a lot of cars out there today. We have a lot of drivers hungry to start off the season with a victory. But who is going to play the game the smartest? who is going to keep it off the walls, especially in the SS, which is going to be the danger zone, and who has the most confidence and the most skill. We're about to find out. You mentioned it. We're about to find out. And this is usually kind of the points that we go into, or the place that we go into the point standing and take a look at. There's actually two point standings, the F1 and the F2 series here in this Lotus 49 series. And the F1 is just a higher rating, uh, I rating for these drivers. And you see here, Obey Trengrade with that win. And then also Sebastian Tixier, John Olsen, Miko Michela, Laust Olsen, Xavier Sanchez, Neil Kemp, Miro Horaski, Gary Quellen, and also Marco Salgado there. They are all regular players in last series, and uh, we expect quite a few of them out there uh, today. And I'm actually looking at timing scoring, Ozzy. We do have quite a few out there, and that leads us into our F2 standings here. Indeed, F2 driver standings, which is for the lower R-rated drivers. David Rossi won last season with Rowley Wallbank in second paint. A place. Then you have Emmanuel Pereira, Andrew Eng, and Glenn Becker ahead of Judy Wikström, Tobias Harnvi, Cam Porter, Michael Griesinger, and Terry Tromeshauser. Tromeshauser. And uh, for Judy, I have a bit of a story. He once gave me a lift home as we look at the Cup of Nations standings. 
<laughs> You'll have to dive into that a little bit more, Ozzy. We can't just leave everybody hanging, but yes, the Cup of Nations here, all the different uh, countries here being represented in last year, of course, or last season, of course, Finland taking home the top step there and uh, getting to what's going to be happening on track. Ozzy, why don't you uh, briefly tell us more while we have a quick minute here while these cars are taking their first uh, lap times here is really fast. We'll take a look at the details. Like I said, first round of 12, we're going to be doing 30 laps here at Watkins Glen Classic open setups, no spare car. So these uh, any damage that these drivers incur will have to um, take it with them throughout the rest of the race. Hopefully not much drive through penalty at 17 X and disqualification at 25 X. Now that we've got that out of the way, Ozzy, please do tell. Yes, so it was 2018 and we had the Finnish National Championship Finals in Helsinki. Now, uh, Yuri was fairly new to the sim racing scene. He had come actually from a um, Twitch viewer chat and sort of like hanging around, getting in tune with the sim racing thing. Really nice guy. Uh, nothing nothing like uh, wrong with that. And the evening kind of took long, and I, I was like, well, I usually use public transport because it's the Helsinki region. Uh, as Topi Korteniemi takes the fastest lap so far. And so, but Yuri offered, well, since he lives kind of, lived kind of nearby, you know, it was the, along the same way. Uh, he was like, well, I can take you home because he hadn't had anything to drink, actually. So I was like, fine, that's good. That's fine. Fine by me. I mean, if you, if you want to take the trouble, sure because it's, it's still like a half an hour drive or so. But that means I don't have to uh, drive myself and he got used to sim racing and evidently he ended up rather liking sim racing, as we can see. Yeah, that's an awesome story there. Definitely and always great to have that designated driver at the end of the day. Yes, uh, you need designated driver wheels too, such as, uh, you know, simo cubes and whatnot. <laughs> I love the humor that you've got out here, Ozzy. We're just taking a look at some of the various cars that are putting in lap times right now. This is provisional third place, Timo Toika out there. We actually just saw a shot of Mick Claridge. Mick is also a big part here on the GSRC team. He's currently provisionally second on the board, but still, as Ozzy was calling it, Topi Kortanaimi up there on the provisional pole sitter. And He's got about two tenths over Mick, and then looking at the rest of the field, I'm actually pretty impressed. You got to go all the way down to 18th place, Ozzy, before you find a car that's over one second back. Yeah, it's pretty close. But then when the lap times are just over one minute, you expect it to be close. Here we have Marco Antonio Lopez Salgado uh, just breaking a little bit uh, at the top of the hill on the SS, and we move on towards Jorge Nieva. And meanwhile, Mick Claridge, where in the world is Mick? He is in provisional pole position. Now, I got a bit of an information, uh, more information about some of these drivers. Teemu Toikka and Topi Korteniemi, they are both drivers from uh, for a brand new Finnish organization, which, despite the name, is actually taking things rather seriously. It's called Pike from Beach Racing. Uh, Pike for the fish and beach, beach as in where you go swimming. If you if you're in Spain, because you're not going in swimming right now, it's minus five, uh, minus ten outside, and the sun has set. So uh, they're a part of that organization, and Teemu Toika is a bit of a Finnish legend. Whenever you see on chat, I support Fat Teemu 46, and that is completely approved by him, by the way. Uh, it's it's about Teemu Toika. He's perhaps the most popular Finnish sim racer out there. And as for Topi, well, he's a little bit faster than Teemu, isn't he? He looks very fast out on the racetrack, and I'm happy we're covering this car right here. This is the number 10, Ove Trangrate. He was last series points champion, and he just put in his first lap of qualifying at a 106.6, and he's going down the back straightaway now. Happy we're riding on board. Look at the suspension movement out of these old Lotus 49 cars. Always really cool to see just kind of how the chassis rolls around and how it's so different than today's cars and looking at the lap times Ove is about a half second up I'm seeing a lot of green sectors right now got to touch the brakes get the nose turned in here and then one final sweeping corner around to the right and he's gonna come out onto the front straightaway he's still looking to be in the good I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough to take away pole right now he's looking to be trending right on top of it Pulls at a 106.093, wow. 106.244 it puts him third place out there yeah, he's splitting the fins. Uh, the Norwegian driver Uwe 
always one of the most interesting and entertaining drivers to watch, and that's not a knock on him. That's not interesting like Pastor Maldonado, for example, or Andrea de Cesares for the older crowd. That's interesting as in somebody who will always give it his all and ten some, has excellent car control, occasionally makes mistakes, but then what is life without mistakes? You need to be a bit of an artist, and in every race you need an artist, and that's Uwe. Yeah, and you know, as long as you follow Bob Ross, everything will be okay. Taking a look at today's starting grid at Watkins Glen, look at that, the number three, Mick Claridge, your pole sitter, Topi Kortanaimi there in the second place, Ove Trengrade, a familiar face in third, Timo Toika, fourth place, Jorge Nieva rounding out the top five, John Olsen in sixth, Sebastian Tixier, seventh, Looks like we have Bill Tyler there in 8th place, Michael Grissinger, and Laust Olsen round out the top 10. Indeed, and then you get to the second page, Jorge Lopez Exposito and Seamus, Seamus Power, which is an excellent name, by the way, in row number 6. Neil Kemp, uh, Gwen Old in 7th row, and then Xavier Sanchez, Glenn Becker, row 8. Evan Gobdell, David Rossi in row 9, Marco Antonio Lopez Salgado and Paul Wilson in row number 10 and we got more yeah 21st place alan graham followed by robert plumley emmanuel Pereira, robert anderson tobias harnvey timothy porter don peak andreas bruno terry tomhauser and andreas eng round out the 30 cars so far and then Ale Ale alejandro fernandez douglas nelson andre huto uh koichi nakajima uh, Chan Stefan, Alexander Karamol, Mats Linden, Kai Hansen, and Serg Surovikin. Uh, 20, 20 rows, 39 cars here in total. What a season opener we got in, on our hand, Joey. The weather is nice, the sun is shining. Uh, we got lovely cars here, great drivers, great atmosphere. Let's go. Yes, great atmosphere. Looking at that air temp, 73 degree air temp, 76 degrees on track. Pretty calm and cool out there. Looking for just a few more cars to get gridded up. I see maybe just two waiting on Mr. Laust Olsen. I think he's just waiting to finally get into his classic Lotus 49 out there. And looks like we've got pretty much everybody taking the grid. And once they get on the grid, this will be a standing start. So. We'll hear the engines rev, and we've got a green flag out there on the racetrack. Great start from really the top three. Mick Claridge gets away. It's side by side going into turn two, but further back, look at this. We got four, even five wide diving into turn one. We'll see if the entire field is able to make it through. Maybe just a few cars spun around a little bit further back for it. Ozzy, for the most part, pretty clean. Oh, no, one going around up through the S's. Yeah, only one, but so far so good. Oh no, we got more there uh, in the back. We got Harvey, and I think Don Peak made it through that. Chan Stefan did not, and they're a little bit stuck together. Meanwhile, if we get the pictures to the lead, Topi Korteniemi has now claimed it back from Mick Claridge. And this is the thing, uh, we got great fights out there in the front. Claridge, Korteniemi, train ride, Nieva, and oh, and that's uh, Tixier around. Yes, that's Sebastian Tixier in the number two, losing it on the first lap coming out of the carousel. But here is that red number three machine, McLaren, and we've got more action. I believe that was third, fourth place. That was Jorge Nieva and also Ove Trengray getting collected. Oh my goodness. It has been a chaotic first lap here for these Lotus 49 machines, but one thing has stayed the same. Mick Claridge leading the way. He is, he is leading the way, but he's got a healthy challenge from Topi Korteniemi now in second place. Topi, who took the lead briefly uh, out on lap number one, had to give it away again. And now Claridge Korteniemi, they are drafting each other a lot of draught with these old cigar-shaped Lotuses and Teemu Toikka then trying to follow them, uh, taking Tyler, Old, Kemp, Ulsen, Power, that whole train behind them. So it, it really, Korteniemi now has a decision to make. Does he want to let the rest of these guys in, including his teammate Teemu Toikka, into the mix? Or does he want to duel it out with Mick Claridge? As a racing car driver, do you want more chaos or do you want less chaos? I think you want less, but then again, he could use an ally here. Yeah, they get so close to touching wheels as they come through what is turn six on this layout. 
out onto the front straight away. And look at this. Topi's going to carry some good momentum, but Mick still leads that lap from what I see on timing and scoring. And he also has the inside line going down into turn one, able to carry that momentum a little bit better. Also able to clear Topi going into turn two into these S's here. But Ozzy, you mentioned it. The draft is so big in kind of these cigar shaped Lotus 49 cars, but Couple that with an even longer straightaway because we're not running the bus stop. Oh, look how aggressively Mick went to the inside, trying to hold it off, getting sideways. Uh, further behind them as well, Tyler trying to get past Toika, but they're side by side for the lead. Korteniemi and Claridge, and Claridge holding on to the inside. Korteniemi not being aggressive enough on the outside. Maybe just a little bit uh, of a let up from him, but they are still side by side for the lead for half a lap now. Korteniemi trying to squeeze Claridge to the outside of the track and taking the lead away in that British Racing Green, Pike from Beach Car, but here comes Claridge once again to the inside. Fantastic racing from these top two, Kortenaimi and also Claridge. They've been side by side for what seems like a whole lap and they dive down into turn one hard on the brakes. From what I see, it looks like Mick is able to get a little bit harder on the brakes, but oh my gosh, I don't think you can separate these two cars with a piece of paper going into turn one and once again, Topi claims that slipstream spot going up through the S's. That's really going to give him this drafting advantage. And look at McClaridge just hanging on up through these S's. It shows you how fast these cars are going and how on the limit they are as they really approach almost 190 miles an hour before they dive down into the carousel here. They absolutely do, but uh, Claridge was unable to close off the inside this time around. And Topi was able to get it past. So you can see in the... Uh, in the inner loop corner, uh, or in the outer loop rather, how Topi was able to claim the position easily once down the inside, but Claridge takes the way again on the penultimate corner, and then they come to the last one, and Claridge makes a mistake, and he goes to sideways. Now, this is potentially a chance, not only for Topi Korteniemi to run away, as the fastest lap last time around was taken in 13th place. That's how far the battles go by Jorge Nieva. Now, here, Claridge has a chance, uh, Korteniem has a chance to run away. Claridge has to run him back, but he's also pulling Teemu Toikka now. Look at Toikka, he's got the fastest lap. Uwe takes it away from him, but Toikka is half a second away from Claridge. Then you got four tenths back to Tyler. Then you got Gwen Old. Then you got Neil Kemp. You got Lars Dulsen. You got all of these guys still in a healthy mix. Well, you mentioned Laust Olsen right here. We're riding on board with him. This is the Laust Olsen cam point of view right now and you mentioned him he's seventh place but look at this line of cars that goes all the way up to our second place runner which is mick claridge and you're right it's just a really good race out there i know that we had some early runners kind of fall out of the mix but what a race we've got on our hands and mick claridge has certainly not let topi get away out front right now they're coming around the final corner and as you can see from Laos, it's one through seven out there, just separated by about half a car length each. And even back behind Laos is Seamus Power in the eighth spot, who's just the same position behind Laos. So it really is a great fight. And any one of these cars, if they make that little misstep with how fast they're going, uh, it's going to be leapfrog of positions. It is leapfrogging positions and one tiny mistake could lead to uh, terrible consequences here with the 49 as well. Don't forget that even if these guys may uh, seem that they're on rails, this car is anything but. Yoni Backman once said, uh, a famous Finnish eye racer said that this is kind of like driving a motorcycle at high speed in terms of the driving technique, in terms of going fast. You have to brake so early. You have to feel the balance. You're constantly kind of like teetering on the edge of going sideways and it has to be little motions. No wonder John Sortiz was able to do well in the 60s, winning the World Championship on both two and four wheels. Uh, the famous Englishman. Of course, we're not talking about John Sortiz here. We're talking about the modern day Jochen Rinz, the modern day John Sortiz, the modern day Denny Holmes, Topi Korteniemi, Claridge Toika, Tyler and so on and so forth. Uh, further back in this pack, you can see in the zoom here, Demu Toika in position number three, not quite able to take his opportunity. Come on, Demu, you have to grab that brass ring. You got the chance now. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to make sure you get all the way up alongside. And 
One thing that I've really noticed out of these top seven cars is what we see in a real life F1 is called a DRS train. And you see the cars kind of third and fourth in line suffer from that as, oh no, I think Mick Claridge got in really deep through the carousel there. And I think that almost cost him the second place. That's going to allow Timu Toika to really get up on the back of Mick. He just got in way too deep on the brakes going into the carousel. I'm not sure if he got loose, but all the way up the racetrack into the marbles and doesn't lose a position, but loses a bunch of track position out there. And look at how much that's condensed the accordion now between second, third, fourth, and fifth place. I know that Laust Olsen is just kind of licking his chops at the buffet saying, hey, who's going to make the next mistake? And when can I pick up these positions out there? And Working lap 8 of 30, Ozzy. We're not even a third of the way into this race. What do you feel the rhythm is out there, especially with somebody like Mick Claridge? He was running up front, but seems to be kind of hanging on to a loose car right now. Yeah, and that's the Mick trademark. He always drives a loose car. We always talk about Uwe, Uwe Trengride driving a loose car, but uh, Mick has kind of loose setups too. I have tried some of them at Donington and at other places, and I tell you what, they were quite the handful and tensome. He may be an old man, but he still can wheel it. Uh, so, Teemu Toikka, meanwhile, isn't able to pass Claridge, and I think this pack, Toikka, Tyler, all everybody else, I think their best bet is still Mick Clare Claridge in terms of trying to catch up to the pack. Uh, not, not the pack, but rather the one-man pack of Topi Korten Niemi. They have to give Mick the opportunity to try and chase this man down. But it is easier said than done, uh, as Topi puts on the fastest lap on the board. They need help, they need draft, but organizing steady draft help, organizing that alternating, uh, alternating uh, draft where you can give the driver you're racing with an opportunity to use your draft, where he does the same to you, where it's give and take. That is so difficult in an official race when you have no communication to the other drivers, really, where you can't trust their intentions and where they're not necessarily at the same speed with you. So it's, it's going to be crucial for Mick to get some help, but at the same time, where is he going to get help from? Let's not forget, once again, Teemu Toikka teammates with Topi. Does he want to win? Absolutely. But where does his allegiance lie? Well, I think the Finns would rather want a win and a third than a fight, a fight for the win and end up second and third. I agree with you. And well, I just think that uh, if there's going to be a car to chase down our leader, I would want it to be probably the pole sitter. And that is Mick Claridge out there. I just think that if Mick is able to hit his consistent marks and start running these fast lap times that he knows he's capable of, he can start to reel in our leader. For instance, Ozzy, this last, last lap that they just came across, Mick Claridge, 106.3. Our leader, Topi Kortznaimi, 106.48. So he took almost two tenths out of our leader that last lap. He just needs to hit off those consistent lap times. And one thing that's also going to do, it's going to bring that whole train up behind him. But... Timu Toika is actually getting some pretty good pressure from Bill Tyler right now. I think Bill is actually as close as he's ever been. And, you know, he's just kind of trying to stay there in the draft. But you're right, Ozzy. They got to catch our leader. Working lap 10 of 30. We're now officially past one third of the way through the race, but not even halfway through. This is really what I call the meat and potatoes section of the race where you just got to settle in and hit your rhythm is, oh no, we have a huge crash on the back straightaway. I think we got a car flipping up over and in the air. I'm not sure who that was. I think we're going to have a disconnect there, but I think we saw a full end over end tumble up into the grandstands. Ah, that's terrible. Uh, thankfully, this is sim racing once again, hearing it, but Bill Tyler, uh, mentioning him briefly, he's been in this series for pretty much ever since he dropped by iRacing. Started doing this sport in 2018, on the Boxing Day in 2018 actually. Has been in the Lotus 49 series ever since 2019. It has become a bit of a veteran and has a lot of great results. Uh, he's, he's won the F2 championship in 2020. He's won his division uh, also in uh, 2019 and 2020. 
and he's got a lot of top 10 positions even in the top division in the top splits so he is an experienced driver he's also a dangerous driver when it comes to his uh, top speed when it comes to his potential he is still getting better and is now hounding Toika who is dropping ground to Claridge as we are watching Bill Tyler now trying to get faster and faster meanwhile Mick Claridge another fastest lap another man who by the way I, I think deserves a shout out at this point for his fan base that has gotten out here Xavier Sanchez in eighth place car number four we are seeing uh, come on Sanchez let's go Sanchez all over the chat he's of course a famous streamer with the nickname Heiki 360 ES a name that comes from Finnish Formula One driver and the reigning Japanese rally champion Heiki Kovalainen so that's a career Looks like Bill Tyler is finally going to be able to make that move. I, I'm sorry, looks like they went around the lap car there. Bill Tyler is still hounding the back of Team Toika. I thought he was going to have the opportunity to make a lunge down into the carousel there. But one thing I noticed that was crucial for Mick that last lap, he was able to clear that lap car before going up through the S. And so it crucially didn't lose him that lap time. It's such an important part of the racetrack. And Taking a look at these lap times once again, our leader, Topi, 106.5, Mick, 106.7, Timu, 106.9. So it's kind of a little bit of an ebb and flow. Who's going to be the fastest car out there right now? But one thing is for sure, I'm looking at lap times, and all of these cars in the top five are in the 106s. And I think that's why we're seeing them so close to each other. And oh, no, it looks like we got contact going up the S's. And I believe that was the lap car getting in the way there. I'm not sure who else. That's the 15. That's Gwendolyn Old. He was running so well out there and just no place to go up through the S's with that car squeezing down there through turn three. Yeah, Gwen Old. Ah, oh, poor thing. She was doing so well. And I was watching uh, on the live feed like SS. You don't want to go to the inside in tear, but it was lap car getting a little bit in the way and uh, that's just so unfortunate i wonder if we'll see that again but when old uh, now uh, all the way down in 12th place the good thing is she is going once again uh, to car number 15 but obviously lost a lot of time lost the top 10 position and that is a tough one to get back from uh, i wonder if she has damage too let's take a look at this again Joey, and just see what happened so uh, they're coming out of turn number one right now. There is a bit of a battle there as well. So it's not just alone. Uh, there is a bit of a battle. You can see the lapped car in front of them. And uh, coming through the SS, she is getting such a great speed, being hounded by the other car. Looking to the inside right here, expecting the lapped car to give room, but they just missed the apex. Yeah, you know, that's a really tough one. I, I agree that the lap car was there, and I, I think my one argument is the lap car didn't do anything to deviate off of their line, so they were being predictable, but at the same time, Gwen was on a race. They were trying to go as fast as they could because they had a competitor in Laos Olsen right on the back bumper, so they had to force it too wide, and unfortunately, that lap car just didn't see Gwen looking down the inside, and when you make contact like that at such a narrow part of the racetrack and such high speed, you see the disaster that the outcome was. Yeah, absolutely. And here we have once again live feed. Uh, Bill Tyler has gotten past them, Toika, and Neil Kemp is also right with them. So this is a three car, three car battle pack heading on to the back straight. Tyler has the position. But can he hold on to it? Because here comes Toika. He's going to look to the inside. Is Kemp going to make it three wide? Absolutely not. He is holding back, which is the clever oh. choice. Tyler loses it over the hump and somehow saves it. Bill Tyler with inhuman reflexes, just like Hiko back in the olden days. And Neil Kemp is going to get past him potentially. No, he is not. Tyler and Kemp battling side by side, but there is that bump at the end of the back straight on the left side of the track. Bill Tyler hit it and he went absolutely sideways, Joey. I'm, yeah, I think couple that with maybe getting on the grass just a little bit. You see him kick up just a little bit of grass. Look at this huge oh. tank slapper one way and then the other way. And then he's all the way in the marbles. How he saves that car, not sure, but actually Neil Kemp is going to take away the position from him right now going down into turn one, but 
that's going to provide Bill Tyler this nice drafting opportunity as he just kind of cruise up through the S's. Actually looks like he's struggling with the front end of his car, maybe a little bit. Not able to keep in that slipstream probably as nicely as he wants to with Neil Kemp, but... Tell you what, look at how much Timu Toika has taken advantage and kind of darted away from this little two-car battle. Seems to me that he's pulled out almost three quarters of a second ahead of Neil Kemp now. Yeah, and look at how far Bill Tyler was to the right side of the track. He was much further towards the center of the track than Toika and Kemp ahead. Not wanting to make that mistake again, I get you clean up on aisle three and code brown maybe after a last lap uh, regardless. Korten uh, Klaric uh, still one second away from the lead, and you're right, Temu Toikka now pulling away a little bit from these two, having the opportunity to potentially try and break away from the draft. It's not broken yet, but he's gonna need some help from behind, Kemp and Tyler to maybe start battling, and then some excellent, excellent, excellent lap times. And we can look behind them as well, Ulsen and Sanchez now in a good battle. Uh, Sanchez has caught up to lost Ulsen who we saw for a long, long portion of this race. And here's number four, the man who does 79, the man who does 49, the man who races a bit of everything, the Spaniard, Xavier Sanchez. Let's see what happens here. I'm happy we jumped this battle here. Xavier Sanchez drafting down the back straightaway, hard into the brakes, going into the carousel, and that will promote him around Laos Olsen. Ooh. I think we saw a car in the background. I'm not sure who That's that Uwe. was. Was that Uwe Trengrade? Oh yeah. no, that is Trengrade into the wall out there. So unfortunate, he was having a great comeback drive. I was going to actually jump to him next. We're going to get a replay here. These cars are starting to really go off in terms of tire. And we see Xavier make that move in front of him. And I, we're going to see what happens to Trengrade right here. Up over that crest like we just saw. And oh no i think just too deep hard on the brakes over shoots it and look at that right into that tire wall heavy damage mm. Mm, very heavy and that is so difficult when the car gets lighter because 30 laps i mean it's not quite a full grand prix distance that we saw in the olden days but it is still uh, it is still quite a long race the car's getting lighter and as it's getting lighter it's gonna get even more squirrely over that hump and it's gonna go squeak squeak and it's gonna go hunting for those bird feeders and it's also gonna get a little bit sideways if you're not too careful meanwhile here toika and uh, having a bit of a battle with neil kemp who has actually caught up to him i was rubbing my eyes a little bit hey eh? neil kemp he's up in the podium positions with car number 13 fair play to him he got past tyler he got past toika and you know uh, knock on wood hasn't made any mistakes today either no, his last lap time, 106.6, which was faster than, you're right, Timu and Bill. He got by both of those cars here in the last couple laps, and he's got a lap car in front of him now that he's got to be careful with. Now, this is very crucial. This is where we saw Gwen have that problem with the lap car going up through the S's. This lap car also seems to be on the pace right now, but this is when they start to close at least these front runners, and here they are starting to close that gap on this lap car. Where are they going to dip out to? Looks like drivers left. They are going to stay drivers right out of the way, but look at the drafting opportunity this provides Timu. They're going to go side by side into the break zone. Neil Kemp thinks better of it and just says, hey, you know what? I'm going to try to stick on the bottom of the racetrack and look at how dirty it is up there. Timu slides way wide, almost opens the door for Bill Tyler behind him, but holy smokes, look at the slingshot off of that corner. Yep, that's a great exit from the corner, uh, both for Kemp and Toika and Tyler as well. They are, have formed this pack once again. Kemp may have the podium, uh, but he is not going to have it easily. Not at all. There's some hungry and thirsty drivers. They all want the champagne. And baby, does it taste good on the podium, especially in the opening round of the season in Watkins Glen, upstate New York. We are here and we got 10 laps remaining after this one. Uh, we are watching Neil Kemp, Demu Toika, Bill Tyler race against one another. Uh, Xavier Sanchez behind them is still holding back Los Tools and having taken the position away earlier. And Jorge Nieva has, has caught up to them as well. So we got battles all over the track, but we are focusing on this one, rightfully so. Neil Kemp and Demu Toika. Toika looking to the inside. Yeah, Toika learned from last time when he's too far out on the outside. It just is bad news bears out there. But 
Neil Kemp continues to be one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. In this lap, it really seems like he's opened up his entries and exits, meaning he's trying to maximize his apex speed through these corners. He says, you know what? I feel like I've got a little bit more pace than Timu behind him, but he just is like this fly that won't leave me alone, and he's just staying right there. Like, why can't I do these lap times that are faster? And he's just constantly in my mirrors annoying me and that's the sign of a true competitor you know he might have made a mistake and neil got around him but timu has not let the battle get away from him as once again he's just right in the draft going up the s's and he's oh. going to be in a great opportunity to potentially pull out side by side with him yeah, and we are watching the lead pick on Scott and he lost a lot of time behind the lapped cars. He had to follow them through the S's. And as a result of that, Nick Claridge has come from one and a half seconds away after losing some time with the lapped cars himself to now three and a half tenths. We know the podium change positions. We'll get back to that later. But look at this now. Claridge, he was potentially down and out. He had difficulties in the early part of the race. Well, he has gathered himself. He has gotten his mojo back. And now, just like Austin Powers, in the heyday of these cars, he is get, getting on the prowl, getting on the hunt, and oh boy, Toppy, better watch out. We still got nine laps to go, and this lead battle has just gotten red hot. Red hot indeed, and you're right, Toppy better watch his mirrors, because something that we saw out of Mick Claridge earlier in the race is that he was so aggressive on the brakes, and Couple that with his loose setup, he's really able to turn the car in the front half of the corner as long as he can hang on to it in the back half. That's always kind of the other side of the sword that you got to deal with with such a loose setup is just hanging on to that car once you chuck it into the corner. But look at this. Our leader, Topi, actually runs pretty wide through the carousel, really gets up that nice exit. But... Mick is able to carry the exit all the way through that runoff and doesn't give up any track position. And you're right, Ozzy. I want to give a shout out to you and our producer behind the scenes, Robert O'Brien, because you guys caught this battle as soon as it happened. And Mick has been hanging out about a second behind our leader, but within the last two, he's officially in that slipstream. And now working lap 23 of 30, the laps are starting to count down and who's going to take home the win today? Well, take your bets now. Uh, if this chance, I mean, these guys can battle. These guys are great, great fighters, but both want to win so, so much. And I think Mick has the advantage in terms of the mental game now, Joey, because he has caught up granted because of the lapped cars, but he was just a tiny bit faster earlier on too. And here he comes to the outside, trying to take a lead away. Going down into the carousel, hard on the brakes goes both of these competitors. Gortonaimi on the inside, Mick Claridge on the outside. Claridge is going to try to get the exit, but it looks like Topi's able to get to that loud pedal sooner. Is able to pull away and clear Claridge, keep the lead, but I don't think this battle is over yet. Coming through these final two sweeping corners, it's so important to set up the car properly, going down the front straightaway to hit your brake marker on turn one because... It's arguable that turn one is the most important corner on this racetrack because it launches you onto the longest straightaway, up through the S's, down the back straightaway, and heading towards the carousel as both of these competitors climb up all over Apex Ooh. and exit curb, and Mick with a huge tank slapper, but most importantly, like Travis Pastrana, stays on the gas. Yeah, stays on the gas, and uh, you can see, you could see, it especially in turn number one, how Mick is struggling to really take the turn one as wide as Toppy is. Toppy is a little bit more planted, he's got that mechanical grip. Well, these cars don't have any aero, they actually produce lift uh, on these long straights, so yeah, there is just a mechanical grip, but Toppy has a little bit more grip on the exit of the corners. He's able to go wider with more confidence in turn number one, whereas Claridge was kind of like, you know, trying to stay away from that high exit curb that we see NASCARs used to here on Watkins Glen. But he was trying to stay off it, then run on it anyway, caught the edge of that curb and just went a little bit sideways. And that's one of those moments where you're not going to lose it there. No, he's su such a great driver. He's able to hold on to it easily, but you lose a bit of time. And most importantly, you mentioned the importance of turn number one. Well, you're going to lose some time there. You're not able to get on the throttle when you're saving the car. And when you're going sideways, you're not going forward. So that's 
the thing that Mick has to avoid from here on out. And it's gonna be in the back of his mind, eating away just a little bit at his confidence as he's trying to solve the puzzle named Topi Korteniemi. Yes, and it is a tricky puzzle out front that doesn't want to be solved. And I know that this battle is really close right now, but working about five laps to go, I actually want to take a look back at Timu Toika and Neil Kemp because they're coming up on two lapped cars. And while we can briefly look at this and jump back to our lead battle, looks like Timu is actually going to get the inside underneath Neil Kemp, but they're going to be three wide passing this lap car coming out of the carousel here. And going down into this back straightaway, but looks like Neil Kemp is actually going to keep that third place position, but Ozzy, check out this battle. Neil Kemp, Timu Toika, and Bill Tyler all separated within a half second between these three, and it's all for the final spot on the podium. It is, and he's holding on to it. White knuckles tight, and white knuckle time. Four more to go, uh, five more to go, excuse me, as we are still on lap number 26 for these guys. And Toika is just hounding him down. They got more lapped cars in front of them as well. So that's going to be something they have to deal with. That's going to be something Kemp, Toika, Tyler are going to be looking to. Perhaps Tyler with a chance to ch catch back up to them. Look at Kemp just catching a bit of draft, being very cheeky with the lapped car. Oh then no, we've had a problem with our leader. Both of our leaders have had contact coming into no. the lapped car. Both of them have heavy damage. And oh no, that's Timu. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Kortanaimi. Totally around. Mick Claridge continues, but he's having a lot of troubles with this race car. You see it just coming out of the carousel. They're trying to clear this lapped oh. car, but disaster for our leader and then also McClaridge clips the lap car going by him and into the wall you see here both of our lead cars now with damage McClaridge continues on we'll see if he's able to limp this damaged car home right now but his last lap time one minute 10 seconds and compared to Neil Kemp who now finds himself in second place at a 106.8 oh, he's gonna chase down the lead here now, can Claridge hold on to it? Does his car still go straight? Is it pointing on? I want to kind of go on board with Mick Claridge because we have these onboard cameras here and see what he's doing. He's actually trying to wiggle down to the back straight. He's, he's testing for the damage. He's looking for it and trying to see if that still works. If it turns all right, if it isn't too much of a banana, he can still hold on to it, but he has lost 1.3 seconds. Uh, on the course of the back straight alone, and look how much he is having to correct on the coming into the penultimate <sighs> corner. He, it's it's oh, going to no. the right, oh, and no, he's, there he lost goes it. he's lost it. He's going around, and back he goes. 360. No, he doesn't doesn't hold on to it, and that means Neil Kemp is leading this motor race. Neil Kemp in the number 13 coming out of the final corner is going to look at Barney the flag man. He's going to have three laps to go. Working lap 28 of 30, he finds himself at the point. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why you never give up in racing. You never know what can happen on the racetrack. And it also looks like Neil Kemp actually had a really bad run out of the exit of turn one, that important corner that we talked about. And look who's lurking right in those mirrors. Timu Toika taking a sniff of this slipstream. Neil Kemp already going defensive. Yeah, and they got the same number 24 as well there <laughs> on the in terms of the lapped car department now get, staying well and truly out of the way mind you hadn't we had no idea that they were going to run into the back of him that's just the speed difference and the difficulty of trying to do anything when a car is a little bit uh, slower in front of you at the exit in the corner you can't you with these cars with these 49s you've got to understand that once you get into the corner once you point it into the corner there is very little you can do to change it change that line change that line you're kind of holding on to it and trying to get through the corner as fast as possible with uh like with any car but you can't really do sudden motions this car doesn't do sudden high speed motions it just does you know guiding it in going sideways trying to hold on to it as kemp is trying to hold on to that lead with toika and with tyler Six tenths of a second separating the top three here on the penultimate lap. Toika now caught a little bit too quickly up to Neil Kemp in the SS. He had to lift off, and that's going to potentially hinder his run heading onto the back straight. 
I tell you what, look at these speeds. They're approaching 190 miles an hour, and Toyka is going to send it ultra deep into the carousel. He's in way too deep. Is he going to get to the tire walls? He's able to save it, but that promotes Bill Tyler up to the second place. Timu Toyka just with a mistake in the braking zone just like that. You can see how easily it is to lose that track position, and I tell you what, if you're Neil Kemp, Coming around this last corner here, that's a little bit of a sigh of relief. You're able to breathe out there right now as he looks at Barney the Flagman. He waves that white flag and he's only got one variable in front of him. He's got one lap car that he's going to have to deal with. That's Matt Linden out there in the 22nd position. He's currently three laps down in that number 28 machine, but Neil Kemp has a healthy uh three quarters of a second over bill tyler right now as they're coming up the s's for the final time ozzy looks like the lap car is going to stay out of the way that's not going to affect our leader in the number 13 machine there you see our top three cars neil kemp leading bill tyler leading timu toika through the carousel for the first time bill tyler takes a big chunk of ground out of our leader they both get a pretty good exit Neil just has to focus on these last two corners, get into him nice and easy with the brakes, set the nose, carry the car through this fast sweeping left-hander. One more corner to go. Make sure not to overcook it on the apex and exit speed as the competitors close up. Neil Kemp sees the checkered flag in hand from Barney. He's going to be your winner here at Watkins Glen, followed by Bill Tyler and Timu Toika rounding out the podium. Wow. And what a job from Neil Kemp. He was close last season at Phillip Island, down south in Land of Upside Down. Uh, 26th of November, he finished second behind Sebastian Tixier. He's had a lot of great results otherwise too. He has upped his game, as others have mentioned. But this day, today at Watkins Glen, the 2023 season opener for Grand Prix Legends, it belongs to Neil Kemp the man from California. And is he gonna walk on the footsteps of another man from California, Phil Hill, maybe with these cars? Maybe, just maybe, this could be Neil's year, but what a dramatic race we've had, Joey. We're gonna talk about this for a long time. And uh, I, I, I think we should get our breaths right now and maybe, maybe just <laughs> go to a brief break. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think we're going to do exactly that. We're going to gather our breath. We'll be right back, and with that, we'll have the finishing grid for you all.
Ozzy, what a race here at Watkins Glen for the opening round of this classic uh, series, this Lotus 49 Grand Prix Legend Series. And we have the final race results. And it was Neil Kemp who kept his foot in it throughout all the battles and found himself in the lead late in the race and then ultimately held on from those advances of Bill Tyler and Timu Toika there in the third place. Xavier Sanchez with a great comeback run after being involved in some of that early mess finds himself in the fourth spot. Jorge Nieva also with a good run there in the fifth position. Unfortunate day for Mick Claridge finds himself in sixth, followed by Laust Olsen kind of always hanging out in that top ten. Sebastian Tixier in eighth, David Rossi ninth, and Gwen Old there in the tenth spot. Indeed, Choi, what a race. We'll go through the rest of your results as well. Even Gobdel, Robert Plumley 11th and 12th. Quiet race for Plumley actually, but able to get some positions after a poor qualifying. Paul Wilson 13th, Marco Antonio Lopez Salgado 14th, then you got Glenn Becker and Jorge Lopez Exposito uh, 15th and 16th, Timothy Porter 17th, Don Peak 18th, Terry Tromshauser 19th, and Andrew Eng. Uh, one lap down, uh, rounding out the top 20. Then we'll briefly go through the uh, lapped cars and the retired drivers. Hansen, Linden, Topic Organemi classified 23rd after leading for a lot of the race. Chen Stefan, Douglas Nelson, Anderson, Haddenvik, Graham, Trengride, Catamol. You'll see rest of the retired drivers there on your screens going from 30th to 39th. But Joey, I do believe next up you have uh, who I believe to be a very, very, very happy man with you on the interview spot. Yes, I'm standing by with our race winner, Neil Kemp. First of all, congratulations on the race win today. Uh oh, Neil, Neil, do we have you on, on mic? You can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we've got you now. How was that uh, race win for you today? I, I'm in shock. I can't believe it. You know, I beat the... Uh, I beat my heroes have been watching over the years, you know? Well, talk to me a little bit about that, Neil. I know that you weren't in the top spot really for the whole race, but you know, we always talk about in order to finish first, first you must finish. And that's exactly what you did. You hung in the entire time, had great battles throughout and then found yourself in the lead spot. Yes, I was in shock and I actually almost lost it coming out of turn one when I heard the sputter tell me that I was in first place. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, it was a, you know, I was just uh, had my head down battling uh, with uh, Timo, I think it was, and uh, and with uh, Mr. Tyler. And uh, we were just going at it for the whole race pretty much after that uh, fun, eventful start. And um, then all, all of a sudden uh, the spotter calls out that I'm in first place. I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. Yes, you certainly made it through a few messes today. And talk to me a little bit about that by battle that you had between Timu and Bill. You three seem to be really inseparable for the last half of the race. Yes, we must have been using John Olsen's setup. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we, were, uh, we were all very, very close and using the draft effectively, I think, uh, to uh, stay with each other. Uh, whoever was up front, you know, the others could, uh, you know, catch up due to the slipstream, I think. Agreed. We saw the slipstream effect come into uh, a pretty big play here. And once again, congratulations on the race win today. That was the first race of 12 here in this Lotus 49 Grand Prix Legend Series here this season. And before I let you go, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to or say thank you to that helps helps you get it done? Well, I'd like to say thank you to John Olson because... Uh, you know, he made the setup that I used today. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank Mick for, uh, you know, uh, showing me the showing me the uh, the lines and all that uh, during our previous races and always being encouraging, uh, as well as all the guys from the community. If you, uh, you know, if anyone out there wants to join a really good uh, community uh, race league, uh, have you, uh, this would be the one, definitely. A bunch of friendly guys there. So, and I'd like to thank you guys for the great broadcasts you present. Well, congratulations there, Neil. Taking home the first checkered flag of the season here at Watkins Glen. And I believe Ozzy has actually caught up with Timu Toika, our third place finisher. 
Yeah, this is road so I can actually catch up with Teemu on the oval, no chance. Teemu Toikka, hello and welcome to the GSRC broadcast. Second place out here for you today at Watkins Glen season opener. What, an, what a race, what an event. Tell us about your race. You had a great run out there. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know what, what to say really. Um, I I had a... Uh, I had some practice before before the before the race. I, I didn't actually plan on doing uh, any any racing this week, but uh, I, I decided to uh, jump in to the uh, Lotus 49 uh, just because Toppy was doing it and, and we are teammates. So so I, I thought you know with some coaching by Toppy, I, I should be able to uh, you know hang, hang on with maybe the midfield. But I, I didn't. I would have never dreamed of. Uh, Finishing on, on the podium on a, on a road course. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You have some experience from the classic Lotus, uh, classic low tie in general, the 79, uh, less so with the 49. Tell us, can you share any of the insight that Toby gave you when he, uh, when you had that private pike from beach racing practice session earlier? Uh, well, he didn't want to give give out too many. Secrets just to, uh, <laughs> for obvious reasons. But but the the main thing was just to not slide too much because uh, back back when I drove this car more, uh, the, the fast way was to uh, slide it everywhere. But nowadays with uh, with the tire updates, uh, the smooth way is the fast way, and uh, it seemed to work this time for me at least. Um, maybe towards the end of the race, I, I started to feel the tires fall off a bit. But other than that, uh, I I had fun and uh, I was able to stay with the leaders. Absolutely. One last question: What went through your head uh, when you saw on your relative screen, when you saw on the uh, space in front of you, watching out from that open face helmet? that Toppy and Mick had both crashed and you realized that this battle you're in, it's not for P3, it's for P1. Yeah, I, I actually actually said that, that uh, uh, because because I, I was battling with uh, Neil at the time very, very hard and uh, I saw someone spinning out uh, and uh, I, I didn't even realize that it was Toppy at first, only like a couple of later when I, when we Finally got to the main straight, and uh, I, I looked at the relative. I saw that the uh, that Toppy was nowhere to be seen, and uh, Mick was slowing down. So I uh, I actually realized that this is no longer a battle for P3. This is a battle for the lead, and uh, uh, I almost same same thing happened to to me as as what happened to Neil. That uh, I almost almost crashed in turn one because I I couldn't believe what 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 just happened. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that can certainly be a shock. Well, Temu, uh, that was a great season opener for somebody who had a long time away from this car. I hope we see you for the rest of the season here as well. It's a great series, and having you would be a great boon as well. Hey, thank you, Temu. And if you have any shout outs you'd like to give anyone you'd like to thank, then feel free to do so. Well, I, I first first of all like to thank uh, Topi Korteniemi for uh, for it. For his uh, advices and uh, for for the setup and uh, all the all the all the uh, emotional and uh, mental support that he gave for for this uh, for this race and uh, I'd like to thank my my stream viewers and uh, I'd like to thank the GSRC crew and uh, their viewers for for the uh, broadcast and uh, yeah I'd like to thank Neil and Bill for the fair race and good battles. Uh, yeah, uh, just one more thing I'd like to get out. Can I actually say this on broadcast? Yes, I can. The admins are sleeping. So, um, <laughs> always nice for a director to hear that. So, uh, go to the other streaming platform. Uh, follow Tesnauke. He's a great guy. Teemu Toikka, thank you very much for the interview and good luck on, the, on your next race. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, Teemu Toikka, of course, goes by the name of Tesnauke. A uh, very popular streamer, especially among Finns, but among others as well. Certainly among us is now a duo of drivers, actually. Joey, why don't you talk to the Lost Man first? Uh, yes, we got Topi and Mick joining us in the booth. And the reason why we brought both of these competitors in is 
I think they're kind of sharing a little heartbreak together. Topi, <laughs> you were really the one who led the majority of the race there, and all of a sudden Mick was able to close it up with a lapped car and then talk us through the disaster coming out of the carousel. Yeah, I did. For me, for me, it looked it was um this is confusing. It it looked like the uh, the door was opened for for me to pass, but uh, then it was suddenly shut, and uh, I I had I didn't have time to maneuver around the car. So, the left cars can sometimes sometimes be a little unpredictable, and yeah. It, it definitely a little bit unpredictable there we just saw and then something that Ozzy also has mentioned throughout the broadcast is when you set these cars in the corner meaning when you turn in and make your decision it really is quite difficult to all of a sudden change that direction and the momentum wants to carry you out there and I think that's also what we saw is you made your decision and unfortunately there wasn't really many other places to go to quickly yeah like in the in the end part of that carousel there's kind of like a dip where you gain gain some grip if if i make a sudden lift there the car's gonna throw itself to the left because i'm in a four wheel slide so i got myself into a bad situation and then couldn't get out of it well now talk to me a little bit about having mick on your bumper because remember Mick was the fastest car on the racetrack in qualifying. He was our pole sitter. And Mick, don't worry, I haven't forgot about you over there. But unfortunately, he gave up the lead to you and you stretched it out a little bit. Were you worried about Mick's pace coming back to you at all? Or were, was it really going to have to be a, a lapped car that brought him back? I know that uh, the car has a draft from like two seconds and we were pretty equal on pace the whole week. We were po po both pushing hard. <laughs> in the week you're trying to beat each other's times and i know he had the same pace so and i know i knew that i didn't have the two second gap so i had to keep pushing well i want to bring mick in now because now that you've heard all of this you guys had such a tremendous battle throughout really the first three quarters of the race take us through that incident in your eyes and was it the same thing that uh you saw out out of uh topi here uh first of all listen listen topi was quicker um, Toppy was quicker today, um, and he's been quicker all week. Not by much, you know. This, I mean, look at lap times, how close they are this week. Um, so maybe half a tenth, tenth in it. But yeah, he he has had the pace. But yeah, that incident was crazy. I just um, I just saw a load of smoke, <laughs> and then my car literally did a wheelie. And um, when it came down, I just uh, looked at the steering and just thought, okay, that that's bent. So um, from then on, I just. I looked at F3 and I, f I think Timu was about six or seven seconds back and I just thought, oh, there is a chance if I can, if I can learn to drive the car again, which is almost, you know, it's always a nightmare. But um, yeah, it was it was tight going around le uh, right-handers and really loose going around left-handers. So um, I thought I'd give it a go and that's why I carried on. But yeah, yeah, just an unbelievable fight. Um, I thought I had a bit of damage from um, when me and Toppy touched in turn one, but no. There was no damage. It was a couple of laps later. I'd realized no, nobody catches Toppy with a damaged car. So, so yeah, that was all about that. So, yeah, good fun. Good race. And, Toppy, I'm sorry if I have been mispronouncing your name this whole time. Um, but, anyways, just to jump back to Mick. I always love to stir the pot a little bit, create some drama, you know? So, go on then. Looking go on then. Into the next race at Road Atlanta and thinking sorry, about Joey. this battle. Joey. Yes. Don't say the Guayas part loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I want to stir the stir the pot a little bit. If you had the green flag battle with Toppy over here, do you think you had him? And is that going to be a preview for Road Atlanta? Uh, uh, I'm going to really disappoint you. I don't think Toppy's racing um, at Road Atlanta, but if he is, I think it would be another good race. Um, it, listen, Toppy's very good. Um, when it comes to little details like getting on power so if he's got a lead it's very very tough to keep up with him so um so yeah it, it all depends i don't know i don't even know how much practice i'm going to do next week but yeah it, if if we're both there I, hopefully it'll be a great race i'm i'm really looking forward to it if he is there yeah well you guys put on a great show i i know it's kind of heartbreak on on how it all ended for you but once again, thank you very much. And Toppy, first, do you have anybody that you want to give a shout out to while we still have you in here? Yeah, of course, Mick. That that was a wonderful battle. I've been I've been waiting that for like uh, I don't know half a year. 
because yeah. I haven't had the chance to race with Mick and have a proper battle for so long time. So <laughs> it was great fun, mate. <laughs> yep. Cheers, mate. Yeah, same. And Mick, do you have anybody that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, you guys. Um, I can't believe Ozzy hasn't uh, verbally abused me yet. So if, if you want to, Ozzy, now, now's your chance, mate. Yeah, Ozzy, go for it. <laughs> 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 Cabbage farmer. <laughs> Brilliant. Listen, let me let me thank one guy, Rolly Wallbank. He painted my car. Uh, lovely Ferrari paint, what everyone's raving about. Well, I am. Well, thank you very much, Toppy and Mick. That was your sixth and 23rd place finishers today here at Watkins Glen. And that's going to do it today for our broadcast. Thanks to the team today, Rob, Ozzy, and Dougie. Make sure to check out our social media website and merchandise store. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. So you don't miss a moment here on GSRC. The next race for this series is Road Atlanta, Saturday, December 24th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And be sure to check out our other broadcasts listed here. Up next on GSRC is the Camel GT Series at the Nürburgring, noon Eastern later today. Until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.